scary to betray him during supper. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When you had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I love you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Lamb. 
butcher it, roast it, eat it, more or less uh, like uh, standing, like getting ready to leave, ready. Your loins girded, sandals on your feet, you're ready. You're not, you're not even, you can, you can sit down, that's what they did, of course. But uh, to be remembered, get ready, ready to go. Have your, uh, what do they call it, uh, a bug out bag ready, right? That's if you're a, a shot at the Saw Show uh, Doomsday Preppers or people like that. Be ready, ready for anything, or an emergency bag. Have that ready. Besides, who wants to stay an agent when uh, freedom is, is just across the sea. What makes all the difference about this night? Moses said it. It is the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood of the Lamb marked on the doorposts and on the sides, smeared on the two as a sign. The blood serves as a sign uh, in, in two ways. Sign always points to something other than itself. It's a, it's, a, it's a remembrance, a visible sign for the Israelites themselves to, to see. They're not the, the, the person who puts it on their door. They're not the only one doing it. Say, well, yeah, yeah neighbors doing it. Yeah, we're all we're all in this together. Kind of a community thing. But it's also more importantly a sign for God Himself. He says, "I will see that sign. I will see the blood." Pass over. Hmm. At midnight, the tenth plague is struck, involving all the firstborn, even even the son of the Pharaoh. Pharaoh panicked, went into crisis mode, and told Moses and Aaron to leave at once. But then he adds an unusual, an unusual uh, phrase here, unusual party request. Go worship your God. Go worship Yahweh. And bring a blessing to me too. He finally got it. At least for a while. The Bible is full of all kinds of signs. First one we learn. Uh, about Noah. And the ark. The rainbow. A double sign. First, it is a reminder to God of his everlasting promise to Noah and all his children and heirs and descendants, just in case they might think that God has uh, forgotten that. It's a reminder uh, to God, too, it's a reminder of the people that God didn't forget them, and for God to say, you know, when I look up, I can remember my promise that you not only God and the people of Israel who saw the rain, but we get to see it every time it rains. Or even in a sprinkler. <laughs> you ever see it in a sprinkler? You know, in your yard? Kind of amazing. We also get to see the colors. And we remember. We remember. Now for the, for the Israelites, there was no threat of death anymore from Pharaoh or from God. The blood made all the difference. And the blood of the Lamb meant uh, that they were given life. It took the death of the Lamb to give them life. Again, Passover remains central to Judaism to this day. But we also remember that it is at the Passover, Jesus having the Passover with his disciples, that he takes the cup, uh, reserved, reminding them that Elijah is coming. You know, takes that cup and says, "Now, now, I am pouring out my blood for you, for all people." <laughs> it has been said that the highest cannot be spoken; it can only be acted. And that's exactly what Jesus did. That's the highest love that a person can get. No, you, can, you cannot love more, uh, someone more than giving your life for someone. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down their life for their friends. And so the love of Jesus on that night goes beyond just the words of remembering the Passover, but telling his disciples and reminding them of his love for us. Jesus' love goes beyond words. St. Paul tells us the truth of our relationship to God and the reality of it, that even though we were enemies of God, even though we were weak, even though we were ungodly, and even though we were
were sinners, Jesus Christ still died for us. It wasn't because we were so good and perfect and honorable. It's because we weren't. And he did not hold that against us. That's something that happened in the past. Christ died for us. He says so. But he also reminds us that whenever we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We're remembering, we're bringing it back to our minds, we're knowing that this is the sacrifice that God has given us through Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the host of this supper means that God will pass over all the sins of those who share in the body and blood infinite, the creator of the universe, the one above all meets us in these common things. Bread, wine, and something. I remember one person asked me, hey, what, what is that bread you guys use? It, it's, a, it's, it's really good. And I said, they're called thin buns. You can buy them at any grocery store. <laughs> well, no, okay. That's pretty good. It's nothing special. And yet God communicates through that, that bread you can, you can buy in the store and through the wine. Our grape juice, too. We got both. Ordinary things. Some people have that for breakfast. Bread, toast, grape juice, and orange juice. That's what God's doing here. Reminding us that through these things, through these ordinary things, that everyone can, can, can uh, connect to, He comes to us. So it's not just the blood and the doorposts, but the blood and the bread and the wine that Jesus says, you are free, just as your Israelites were. You are free. In fact, sinners are included, <laughs> expected. Every age, every class, every race, every sex, doesn't matter. Back sinners, uh, long time sinners, or even new to the faith sinners are invited first in line. This cup is the new covenant. <coughs> the new one. Given and shed for us. That's why we have this night, this Thursday night, Monday, Thursday, Commandments Thursday. It's a remembrance of what God has done for us. In Jesus. Uh, that's what Lent is all about. Uh, we heard uh, at the beginning our Lord's call to return to Him, to uh, intensify our struggle uh, against sin, death, and the power of the devil that keeps us from uh, loving God, loving each other. We are reminded that God never tires of giving peace and life to us. And through the words of forgiveness, we are given new life. And through the body and blood of Jesus, we are promised again to be sent out into the world as his disciples. Holy Communion gives us a glimpse of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord comes. And so we we come together tonight on a special night to celebrate and remember and are fed and nourished with the grace of God. Amen. At this time, let us sing our next one, One Bread, One Body.